With Borderlands 3 so close to release, I've decided to explore the timeline of the game that invented the looter shooter genre, and explore how such a barren, desolate world filled with all sorts of likeable and zany characters managed to grab the hearts of its audience for the past 10 years. Through the sequels, pre-sequels, and all of the shiny loot thrown into your face is a deep, rich lore buried within its history. So sit back, relax, and let me tell you a story. The story of Borderlands begins long before the events of the game. Long ago, an ancient alien race known as Iridians inhabited the universe. While not much is known about them, the Iridians were the first recorded species to inhabit the world of Pandora, using an ore called Iridium to create extremely advanced weapons and technology. The Iridians were responsible for creating the vaults which contained such technology within. Also within these vaults were monsters. The vault monsters all hold a variety of different uses, most of which the Iridians created themselves. Some vault monsters like the Sentinel protected knowledge of the future, and others such as the Warrior were designed as weapons of mass destruction. However, some vaults were even used as prisons. One such prison cost the Iridians everything. The Iridians' entire civilization was wiped out attempting to contain a godlike being from an alternate dimension known as the Destroyer. Their efforts worked as the monster was imprisoned, locked away within one of their many vaults. As a safety measure, the Iridians left behind guardians to protect the vaults from freeing creatures like the Destroyer, as well as protecting the last remnants of their society. Also within the vast universe of Borderlands are women known as Sirens. Their background and history are unknown, but their powers are incredible, usually distinguished by the tattoos running across their body. Only six Sirens can exist at any given moment. Fast forward millions of years to a more modern day. A weapons manufacturing company known as Atlas are the first ones to discover the ancient alien technology on the planet Promethea. Atlas had managed to reverse engineer the alien weaponry to create and manufacture designs of their very own. In doing so, it brought Atlas to the forefront of weapons manufacturing, which was extremely profitable. Word spread very quickly of Atlas's success, and rumors of vaults began spreading across the universe as others would be in search for such treasures. Other such mega corporations would take inspiration, such as Hyperion and Dahl. Other such weapons manufacturers would exist such as Jacobs, Maliwan, Tedior, Torg, Vladoff, and many others. Though not everyone was in it for the vault. Much like Atlas, Dahl would explore other planets in hopes to find a vault and claim its riches within. One such planet the two corporations would fight over would be Pandora, a very barren and desolate world. Dahl would be in the forefront of Pandora's exploration as well as its moon Elpis, providing many supplies and benefits for the residents of the planet. Dahl offered free Echo Huds to new settlers on Pandora during the short-lived Gold Rush era, in which hundreds of people ventured to the planet to uncover its vault. Dahl was also responsible for establishing the Echonet communication system, so travelers could stay in constant communication with each other during their explorations. Research facilities, mining stations, and trading posts all pop up around Pandora thanks to Dahl. Researchers, scientists, and archaeologists are all sent to the planet in an effort to uncover the secrets of the vault. One such researcher is Patricia Tannis. On the opposite side of Dahl's practices, however, much of its labor force was made up of criminals and mental patients to reduce on cost. Atlas was also present on Pandora, not allowing the vault to go so easily into the hands of its competitor. They had deployed their own military force known as the Crimson Lance led by Commandant Steele, a siren, to uncover the vault and claim the treasures within, alongside scientists to learn more about the world. General Knox, however, is the first general of the Crimson Lance, having spent the majority of his life as a soldier. Dahl was not Atlas's only competitor, however, as Hyperion was also present on Pandora. They are the company responsible for the new U stations, as well as the Claptrap units. Because of this, Atlas would begin working on something they called the Gordis Project, which would allow them to trap and control the Vault of the Traveler a moving Iridian vault jumping from location to location. Unfortunately, life on Pandora is not so simple, as the corporations had landed during the planet's seven-year winter. And so, when summer rolled around and the local fauna came out of hibernation, things went south. Pandora became a treacherous terrain to explore, and the money being put into it wasn't making a return. As documented by Tannis, after 493 days, a planet-wide exodus would occur. Day 493. 
Doll Corporation just shut down their mining operations here on Pandora. I think they are insane. Or that is, whoever is making the decision is insane. Iridium mining on this planet has been hugely lucrative for Doll and has funded my project. It's been especially profitable given how low their labor costs are. I wonder what Doll will do with all the unpaid convicts they've been using to work their mines. I wonder if any of them will be my friend. Dahl abandoned all of those who resided on the planet as it was more cost-effective that way. The criminals and mental patients would be set free, and later go on to become the Psychos, Scavs, and many other hostile inhabitants. On Atlas's side, the Crimson Lance hired bandits to overrun a mining city named Old Haven. Once successful, the bandits were killed, and the area was used to build a secret underground facility for the Gordas Project. The mining town was built on top to keep its secrets hidden away. Patricia Tannis in this time, however, has become completely obsessed with finding the vault as it has driven her to develop psychosis. Her research team is all killed and she is the last remaining researcher of her squad. Much is learned about the key and its function from her time on Pandora. One of the more important details is it can only be used once every 200 years. My program was able to decipher quite a bit more than I had been able to understand before. It will take a few days to fix, but I was able to find many repeated instances of an event that takes place every 200 years. It's repeated many times with a symbol that looks not unlike a circle with an upside down V in it. It's possible that this is the vault. And something about the vault happens every 200 years. Day 481. It's true. It's all true. My program did it. Program. Pro program. <laughs> I'm now certain that the vault is here, and that the symbol has something to do with opening it. I've checked and triple-checked my findings, and it all seems to make sense. It looks like there are extreme measures to keep the vault secure, but that it can be opened every 200 years. The vault's contents must be extremely valuable, maybe better than the Atlas tech. But I cannot reveal this information to anyone just yet. If I'm wrong, I'm done. And if I'm right, the suits will claim it. I must find the vault myself. I found something. I think it is the key to the vault. It proves the vault is real, and that it's here on Pandora and that it can be mine. I also learned that, by my calculations, we are near the 200th anniversary of the last vault opening. Within half a year, approximately. If I leave now, I will never make it back in time. I will stay. Day 684. I seem to be unable to leave camp anymore. I've collected all of the information I need to be able to find the vault, but I'm overcome with terror and instantaneous paralyzation upon any attempt to leave my confines. I believe I have some kind of psychosis. Whatever it is, I'm a prisoner of my own jail, and I will not be able to find anything without help from an outside party. I will put out feelers to see if I can get someone on this rock to grant me assistance. Perhaps I can send an off-world message to attract some vault hunters. Some company would be lovely. Tannis then managed to uncover fragments of the vault key, which were then stolen by bandits and spread across Pandora. Meanwhile, on Pandora's moon Elpis, the situation was not much better. Dahl constructed a mining colony to tap the vast quantities of liquid methane found on the moon. Concordia was the primary port between Elpis and Pandora. Dahl's moon military force was led by Colonel Zarpadon. When she and her team were exploring a dig site, they uncovered remnants of Iridian origin, which would change all of those who came into contact. The following day, due to Dahl's extensive mining efforts, the surface of Elpis began to crack and split open, resulting in many deaths. The moon's atmosphere was lost. Lava poured out of the cracks, killing many of Dahl's workers. Those who resided on Elpis primarily fled to Concordia in seek of safety. This event would be known as the Krakening. Colonel Zarpadon and her military force, however, would be exposed to the vault by the Watcher, a mysterious Iridian alien with telepathic capabilities, giving them knowledge of the future in hopes to prevent it. Zarpadon and her force would turn against Dahl, going under a new name, the Lost Legion, sworn to protect the vault and prevent the future they witnessed. Dahl's efforts go unrewarded, now having fled both Pandora and Elpis. Atlas and Hyperion, however, would keep presence on Pandora. Though these mega corporations wouldn't be the only ones in search of the vaults, as treasure hunters also took interest. These people are known as vault hunters. <laughs> 
We finally reach the events of Borderlands 1, as four Vault Hunters named Roland, Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick arrive in the town of Firestone, led by the mysterious woman named Angel. After clearing out the nearby bandit population, they meet some of the friendly residents of Pandora, including Claptrap, Dr. Zed, Scooter, and Marcus, who dropped them off earlier. Dr. Zed has medical vendors around Pandora, but spends most of his time in his infirmary. Scooter runs all of the catcher ride stations, which helps explorers digistruct vehicles to drive around the vast terrain. And Marcus's main draw is selling weapons. With the help and assistance of such residents, as well as Angel, our four Vault Hunters encounter a bandit boss known as Sludge, coming across an Iridian artifact in his possession, which is revealed to be part of the Vault Key. Commandant Steel, commander of the Crimson Lance, has declared rule over the planet, so any and all Iridian artifacts are to be turned over to them or face opposition. At this time, the Vault Hunters make their way into the city of New Haven. The residents driven out of their old city have since relocated to the middle of a junkyard town. They meet a woman named Helena Pierce, the administrator of the town, who believes what it is the Vault Hunters are looking for, Patricia Tannis is as well. She gets into contact with her, and then she with the Vault Hunters, who lead them to her location. The Vault Hunters do indeed possess part of the Vault Key, and so Tanis directs the more than capable group around Pandora collecting the various pieces scattered around the land. Once the final piece is collected, the Vault Hunters are sent to kill the bandit lord, Baron Flint, as Tanis tells us that he holds the last piece. Upon killing him, it is revealed that there was no fourth piece, and Tanis simply wanted Baron dead. Commandant Steele claims her and Tannis are working together, which Tannis never refutes, though she claims the Crimson Lance came and stole the Vault Key against her will. She asks for the Vault Hunters to be exonerated, which Steele refuses and throws Tannis in a cell. Steele then takes the Echo Net offline. The Vault Hunters proceed to the Crimson Enclave, a Crimson Lance base, where they rescue Tannis from her cell, who instructs them how to reactivate the Echo Net systems. With Tannis saved, the Vault Hunters go after Steel and the Vault, which is being prepared to be opened. After fighting through the Crimson Lance soldiers as well as the Guardians designed to protect it, our four heroes reach the Vault, moments before Steel uses the key to open it. What is found, however, is not the loot and treasures Legend spoke of. Instead, they are greeted by the Destroyer, the monster that wiped out the Iridians millennia ago. It was locked away due to the danger it posed to the universe, as if it were set free, it would destroy everything, with nothing being able to stop it. Commandant Steele and her forces are blindsided and immediately killed by it after its release. You have failed to listen to Commandant Steele. I've warned you time and again, yet you persist on ignoring my orders. The contents of the vault are rightfully the property of the Atlas Corporation. But you? <laughs> you belong to me. Yes, the key works! Sergeant, get your team ready to go inside. Fortunately for the Vault Hunters, the form the monster takes on Pandora allows them to be able to kill the alien in its mortal form. This creature may be immortal in its own realm, but in this reality, it cannot survive without a host, and that makes it vulnerable. When it becomes flesh and blood, it can be hurt, even killed. You just need to know where to aim. After a hard-fought battle with the fate of the universe at stake, the ancient alien is slain, and the Vault Hunters are rewarded with the legendary loot. With their task complete and treasures more or less fulfilled, the journey seemed over for these four. Roland and Lilith would begin dating, and the key is subsequently returned to Tannis, and Angel rests easy as the vault can't be opened for another 200 years. Opening the first vault, however, came with some unforeseen side effects. It triggered the release of a purple element called Iridium to spread all across Pandora. The Hyperion Corporation would quickly begin moving into the Pandoran system to capitalize on the new element. A space station still under construction, known as Helios, would hover over Pandora. With their journey finished, the four are soon contacted by Athena, who when we meet her, is former Crimson Lance. She's been trained since a young age to be an assassin for the Atlas Corporation. General Knox was initially against using such highly skilled warriors on a planet like Pandora, but after seeing them clear out T-Bone Junction, he approved of them. I told you idiots, we don't need assassins here. 
There's nobody on this spin and stink nugget of a planet you couldn't just kill with a heavy rock and a can-do attitude. Athena and the rest of her lady ninjas would be better served on a planet where the air doesn't taste like armpit sweat. Ignore my last message. The assassins might actually be kind of useful. Athena's girls cleared out the roads around T-Bone Junction, didn't leave one bandit standing. Athena had different goals to that of Atlas. She went to Pandora in search of her long-lost sister Jess, and told General Knox that once she found her, she would leave Pandora with her sister. Though, General Knox didn't exactly care. She asked permission to look for somebody named Jess in the villages nearby, uh, which I granted. Seems like a nice enough kid, which, given what I hear you guys do to the assassins when they're children, is uh, pretty damn impressive. Athena smiled today. That was kind of creepy. She got back from a recon around 0300, said she had a good lead on this Jess chick she'd been looking for. I just kind of grunted at her. She wouldn't stop talking. All excited. Said they were sisters or something. Said she'd been looking for her since she was a kid. Said that they'd escaped Pandora together once she found her. Like I said, uh, nice enough, kid. Don't screw her over or I'll be pissed. In an effort to keep her in the core, the Crimson Lance ordered a Code 64 on the village where Jess resided, unbeknownst to Athena. In the midst of the confusion, Athena wound up killing her own sister, sending her on a tirade. You assholes. What the hell did she do to you to deserve that? You order a Code 64 on a village knowing full well her sister lived there? For hell's sake, she took out her own sister and all the confusion because you ordered thermals only. You had to tie up that one last loose end just to keep her in the core. So that's what happens when you know too much to leave, but you're too good at your job to die. <sighs> when she realized what she'd done, she, uh, she got a little stabby. She's in the brig now. Probably ship her back to Atlas HQ tomorrow. God, I hate this place. While detained for a short time, she managed to escape and swore to exact revenge upon the Crimson Lance as well as the Atlas Corporation. With the help of the four Vault Hunters, the already wounded Crimson Lance would meet their demise. Killing the last remaining General Knox, the Atlas Corporation would flee from Pandora and abandon the Gordas Project, having lost most of its profits. Athena would wander Pandora, killing any remaining Atlas employees or stray Crimson Lance soldiers she found. Our characters are also introduced to Moxie, the alluring hostess of the Underdome Coliseum. She is the mother of Scooter and quickly becomes an ally of the Vault Hunters. Hyperion, now the only company to have interest in Pandora, perform an experiment to rid the planet of Vault Hunters. Ever since their arrival, guns have flooded the market with cheaper, still functional weaponry, and Hyperion intends to put a stop to it. They program one of the original Claptrap units to assassinate the Vault Hunters by making it more capable and intelligent, giving rise to the robot ninja assassin Claptrap. This goes awry, however, as the robot realizes how unfairly he and his brethren have been treated. So Claptrap starts the robot revolution. All of the Claptrap units rise up in the pursuit of freedom. One of the Hyperion representatives, Mr. Blake, aids the Vault Hunters in dealing with the Claptrap problem. The units are eventually destroyed and the revolution a failure, as the remaining Claptraps are returned to normal. With the Crimson Lance finally destroyed, Athena seeks work as a hired gun, while Roland, Lilith, Mordecai, and Brick begin assembling an army of ex-Crimson Lance soldiers abandoned by Atlas who are rebranded as the Crimson Raiders, and swear to protect Pandora against Hyperion and its future threats. Now seems like the appropriate time to bring up a Hyperion programmer and engineer named Jack, as well as the true nature of the events in Borderlands. Prior to the events of the first game, Jack was a married man and had a daughter with his wife, who he named Angel. Much like Lilith in Commandant Steel, Angel was born as one of the Six Sirens. When she was a child, Jack tethered his daughter to an interface, harnessing the powers of her siren ability, granting her control over most technology. The events of this action remain muddled in history. Jack claims it was Angel's siren powers which killed her mother, which was why he was forced to create the mechanism in the first place, while others 
believe it's a made-up excuse to justify his actions. Yeah, I know you think I'm a monster, you think I enslaved Angel, but you didn't see what she did to her mother. I had to restrain Angel's power. You get that? I had to! Jack is a very smart and clever man, though his position at Hyperion would lead you to believe otherwise. This was ultimately the reason he was eager to take risks to work his way up the corporate ladder. The vaults intrigued him, though he was not capable himself to uncover one, so he used his daughter to get the attention of four vault hunters to discover and directly lead him to a vault. He intended to capture the destroyer and use it for himself and create a weapon which would kill all of the bad guys. However, after its defeat, he instead settled and obtained its eye and implanted it onto the Helios space station and dubbed it the Eye of Helios. His intention was to use the superweapon to wipe out all of the bandits and psychos on Pandora, so the planet could begin to become a more peaceful and civilized environment, though he'd yet to be able to act on his plan as Helios was still under construction. The not fully built Helios station was then attacked by Zarpadon and her lost legion, hoping to use the Eye of Helios to destroy Elpis, thus keeping the vault safe and the future they saw unfulfilled. So under attack by an army, Jack sends out a distress signal for any mercenaries willing to help reclaim Helios as well as search for its vault. The former Crimson Lance assassin Athena is one of the people to accept the contract. Alongside the mercenaries Wilhelm and Nisha, Timothy, who has undergone facial surgery to pose as Jack's doppelganger, Claptrap, one of the original units reprogrammed to be a frag trap, and Aurelia, heir to the Hammerlock family fortune who later bumped into the Vault Hunters, travel to Helios to rescue Jack, save the space station, and uncover a vault. Each of them were recruited for different reasons and have backstories of their very own. Long time ago, my dad bought me a dog. His way of apologizing for mom's temper. Loved that dog. Took her to school, carried her on my shoulders, held her close after mom was done yelling and growling and punching. Used to fall asleep with her in my arms. One day, my dog got bit by a frenzy crutch hiding in the tall grass. Eyes went red, lips went blue. Acted normal otherwise, though. I thought maybe she was immune. Maybe I caught a break. That night, Mom did her usual thing. She hurled a glass at me. I tried to catch it. I'd gotten good at catching whatever she tossed. But it bounced off my hand and fell on the dog. Not hard enough to hurt it, but its eyes went even redder. Lips even bluer. Foam dripped from its jowls and it lunged at me. Sunk its teeth into my neck. Over my own screams, I could hear Dad whimpering, the dog snarling, and my mom laughing. After Dad patched me up, I grabbed a shovel and bashed the dog's brains out. Oh man, I am so late! No, son of a. Hey, you! Yeah, yeah, claptrap unit! Who? Uh, me, sir? Oh, no, I'm sorry. The other Hyperion piece of metal crap that can open doors for me. I'm sorry. I can do more than open doors, sir. We CL4 PTP units can be programmed to do anything, from open doors to ninja assassinate highly important janitorial officials. Yeah, 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 just... Wait, you can actually do that? Sightly! I once staged a revolution myself. There were lots of guns and a lot of dying. You'd think I would have at least gotten some better benefits out of the whole thing, but no! Demoted back to door opening servitude! Yeah, 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 got it. Just shut up and open the door. I'm late for the quarterly meeting. Sure thing, sir. And open! Have a lovely afternoon, and thank you for using Hyperion Robot Services. Let me know if you have any other portal-rific needs. <laughs> oh, I will. I most certainly will. When you say fail safe, uh, what is it that you mean exactly? I mean exactly that, John. All the CL4 PTP units have a unique fail safe that prevents them from being tampered with. Yeah, yeah, but for like bandits and stuff, but not other Hyperion personnel. Including other Hyperion personnel. Just feel lucky you didn't pick the one that spontaneously combusted, or you'd have more than a migraine from too much base. Thanks for all your help, Docket. That guy. If I can't get rid of Claptrap's dance protocols, I'll have to work around him. Hey, Angel. Yes, Jack? Run an analysis on how many subroutines we'd have to include to minimize the potential that my prototype won't drop what he's doing in sing karaoke. Um, Jack? What is it, Angel? 
There are too many variables to allow for a complete overhaul of the prototype systems. You may just have to settle for a flawed product. Or try a different model. Collapse are outdated by three generations with marked improvements. Now that's not the point. The newer versions don't have the space or flexibility I need to make this work. I need someone that can think for themselves but can't disobey an order. Like, say, don't open your presents until Mercenary Day. Sorry. Perhaps if you rerouted some of the L-cache and bypassed memory sequencing... Yeah, I... Well, hey, that might actually work. I mean, he'd lose most of his memories, but come on. <laughs> it's just a robot. It's not like he has feelings or anything. Booting sequence complete! Hello! I am your new steward bot. Designation CL4PTP, Hyperion Robot Class C. Please adjust factory settings to meet your needs before deployment. Finally! Can you hear me? What do you remember? Yes! Remember what? Are... are you my father? Uh, no. Uh, you... Are you God? Am I dead? No, 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 you're not dead, you're... I'm dead, I'm dead! Oh my god, I'm dead! You are not dead! Now shut the hell up! Your new designation is FR4GTP. Frag Trap. You are a merciless killing machine. Got it? Okay! Thanks for giving me a second chance, God! I really appreciate it! What? No, oh, no, you are so stupid! Whatever, you're welcome. Wilhelm, you've risen to prominence as one of the foremost mercenaries in the galaxy. But you had humble beginnings, did you not? A life no different from any other. What spurred you down your path of ultraviolence? What confluence of events, what changing winds of circumstance and privilege led you to sit right here in front of me, dictating your autobiography? As a kid, I was good at fights. Let's move into later years. Puberty. The teenage years. A difficult time for anyone, perhaps more difficult for you, yes? A coming from a violent childhood, a broken home, possessing little intelligence. Tell me, how did you get on with your peers? Take me inside your mind. When I was a teenager, I was good at fights. What about the man you are now? Who is Wilhelm the Enforcer? What drives him? What are his likes, his dislikes? Please give me an answer which does not include the word fights. I like steak and robots. This has been an extraordinary waste of time. What's the point of you, Wilhelm? What do you even want out of life? I'm really good at killing people. I want to be a robot. That's pretty weird. Mr. Lawrence? Oh, uh, yeah, that's me. Timothy, please go through the door to your right. Your interviewer will be waiting for you. Do I, uh, need to sign some papers, or...? Through the door, please. No, wait, how do I know this isn't some scam to get my kidneys? You applied for this position because you needed money. Beggars can't be choosers. But... I... okay. All right, I'm ready. Very good, Timothy. How are you feeling? Oh, I... what happened? What is the last thing you remember? I was... there was a door, and, and you were there, and you asked me some questions, and then I woke up here. Hmm. Seems the anesthesia we're using is still causing substantial memory loss. Nurse, collect all my notes on experimental post-traumatic stress therapy. I've got some ideas. Da, doctor. I hook this one up to drip. No, not until he feels it. We need to make sure the nerves weren't damaged during the surgery. Surgery? What surgery? Shh. Relax. I'll fill you in on everything. My name will be Jack. I work as an engineer for Hyperion. Doctor, I, I still sound like myself. That will be fixed with the voice modulator implants. Now that you've signed these forms, for the next 20 years you'll be Jack. Jeez. Uh, when do I get paid? Soon. Report to Medical Chamber 7. Experiment Commentary Day 4. Visual transformation complete and all records deleted. Timothy Lawrence, at least on paper, no longer exists. And neither do his secrets. Jack will be very, very pleased. Hey there, sexy. What? Are you talking to me? <laughs> of course. Who else would I be talking to? You see any other gorgeous strangers in this place? Uh, no. Guess not. What's your name? Or should I keep calling you sexy? Uh oh, the name's Timmy. Uh, Jack. Uh, but you can call me whatever you like. How about the man who bought me a drink? Works for me. Uh, barkeep? Uh, uh, I'm sorry, what do you, what do you want? Should I, should I even ask, or I'll just go ahead and, yeah.
What? You never bought a girl a drink before? <laughs> no, but that's uh, another story. Let's skip that and go back to the part where you call me sexy, okay? I could get used to that. Is it done? Yes. He's your spitting, cursing, heroic image. Perfect. Did you tell him that the process can't be reversed? I don't think it'll be an issue. I think he's rather enjoying being you with all your endowments. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't want to think about that. Listen, I need you to get him up here ASAP. I want to brief him before the other vault hunters get here. He'll be on the next shuttle. Okay, great. Let's go. Hold on. What is that alarm going off for? Doc, I gotta go. I think a claptrap got stuck in the servo coils again. God, those robots are useless. It is here the events of the pre-sequel take place. Not too long after the Vault Hunter's arrival, are they quickly overwhelmed by the Lost Legion and an alien referred to as the Watcher. A jamming signal is preventing the use of any fast travel stations, leaving everyone stuck on the space station. Because of this, Jack sends the crew down to the moon Elpis via Moonshot in hopes they can find the source and destroy it. Our characters run into Janie Springs, a junk dealer who helps the Vault Hunters get to the city of Concordia. Here, they meet up with Roland and Lilith who are on vacation, but most specifically, Moxie, who assists them in disabling the jamming signal, which allows Jack to flee from Helios. The Marif, the mayor and sheriff of Concordia, formerly under Jack's division of Hyperion, had struck a deal with the Lost Legion in exchange for money and power. When confronted by Jack, he fires his weapon, missing, resulting in Jack killing him himself. I surrender! Oh, I was gonna let you live, you dumb bastard! What is wrong with you? In an effort to retake Helios Station, Jack formulates a plan by using a robot army to do it with him. With the assistance of Felicity, an AI formerly in charge of running the doll warship Drakensberg, and Gladstone, a Hyperion technician, the Vault Hunters go to an old doll factory where Jack and Gladstone create the Constructor, a Hyperion robot capable of digestructing an infinite amount of loader bots. Felicity is installed against her will, and as retaliation for doing something that will kill her, she turns against Jack, but the Vault Hunters neutralize her, wiping her memory, making her compliant. After rescuing a few other Hyperion technicians, Gladstone proposes the idea that perhaps there are other traitors working against Jack and for the Lost Legion, in a similar vein to the Marif. Jack finds the idea worrisome, and so he murders the scientists via airlock in front of the Vault Hunters, as well as Roland and Lilith, in hopes to snuff out any traitors. For what it's worth, I am really sorry. When the team finally make their way back to Helios, Jack and the Vault Hunters, with the assistance of their robot army, confront Zarpedon, getting into an all-out firefight with her until she is inevitably bested. She reveals the location of the vault, begging that Jack stop his pursuit, as many would die, before being killed by him. Hold your fire! I'm not done with her yet. It doesn't matter what happens today. Your fall is coming! Yeah, yeah, cool. Where's the vault? Hidden beneath a tangle of chemical filth. I've seen what lies inside it. You Ooh, can't- Wait, wait, wait. You've seen inside it? The vault's open? You must turn back. The power within the vault would trigger a chain of events Or that... The vault's already open, huh? Cool. Now let's deal with that laser core. Meanwhile, on Helios, a scientist named Professor Nakayama begins work on an AI prototype, hoping to cheat death by uploading a patient's conscience onto the computer. His obsession with Jack makes him the perfect candidate. I'm going to take Jack's personality and back it up in a computer! Roland, Lilith, and Moxie have begun to see Jack's descent into madness, and so the group decides to turn against him. They continue to pose as allies, getting the Vault Hunters to the Eye of Helios, where they trick Jack into overloading the Destroyer's eye and destroying the superweapon completely. That was one of a kind! The things I could have done! Friggin' liars! Friggin' cowards! They're no better than bandits! Now betrayed, Jack rushes to the vault, hoping to claim its contents before anyone else can. He is met with opposition by the Iridian Guardians and the remaining Lost Legion soldiers. Capable of pushing through and reaching Elysir, the Vault Hunters face the Vault's Guardian, the Sentinel. After a hard-fought battle, the Guardian inevitably falls, and Jack arrives just in time to claim the artifact within. 
giving him visions of the future and the vault hidden on Pandora, housing an even greater power than that of the Destroyers. As the visions flow through Jack, Lilith arrives and punches the artifact into his face, branding him and setting him over the edge completely. Big bastard, wasn't he? Nicely done. Keep an eye out for that creepy red one. I don't want to get interrupted. Wait, what? That's it? That little thing. The hell did... Wow, what kind of weapon? Oh my god! I get it! I understand! I understand everything! <laughs> Hey, a handsome. I'm gonna kill her. I'm gonna kill them all. Oh. First, you're gonna find me a doctor. Then we're gonna wipe those bandit bastards off the face of Pandora. And then, then we're gonna wake the warrior. The what? It's gonna be so good. We're gonna scorch the freaking planet in fire. There's gonna be screaming. Bandits are gonna die left and right. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> he adopts the identity of Handsome Jack and kills the Hyperion CEO and President, Harold Tassiter. Mr. Tassiter? Mr. Tassiter, are you there? Mr. Tassiter's been replaced, sweet cheeks. Starting today, you're working for me. Who is... John, is that you? Call me Jack, honey. <sighs> Handsome Jack. Now in control of Hyperion, he begins his search on Pandora so he can kill everyone on it. Athena originally intended to leave Jack, wanting nothing else to do with him as she had also seen the power go to his head. Her and Elpis resident Janie Springs settle down with each other in the underground city of Hollow Point on Pandora. Jack, on the other hand, learns of a secret weapon known as the H-Source, hidden away within the Claptrap unit. So he hires Athena and the other vault hunters once more to retrieve it for him. The crew is sent inside the mind of Claptrap, battling bugs, viruses, and subroutines, learning more and more about the robot with each passing moment. A dangerous subroutine known as Shadow Trap attempts to steal the H Source and use it for himself to get revenge on all humans. However, he is thwarted by the Vault Hunters who manage to get the H Source to Jack, giving him access to all sorts of new weaponry, blueprints, and code. He then uses the H Source to destroy every Claptrap unit in existence, believing them to be useless as well as a mistake. You've given me the keys to the Hyperion Kingdom! Tassiter's ultra secret designs, latest intel, and uh, the program codes to eliminate any product line I goddamn choose. Like, say, those pain in the ass, bumbling, screw up claptrap units. You're not serious. It's so good to be the king, baby. Honor and pleasure of shooting his claptrap personally. Hyperion then dumps the shells all around Pandora. Claptrap is dumped off at Windshear Waste, an icy hospitable wasteland where Shadowtrap, having survived his encounter with the Vault Hunters, releases himself into Claptrap's unit, rebooting him, bringing him back to life. He is later found by a man by the name of Sir Hammerlock. Aurelius' brother, who fixes Claptrap, restoring him to normal, leaving him the last of his kind.
Got ourselves a bit of a fighter, eh? With that job finally finished, Athena cuts all ties to Jack, disgusted by his actions and his constant unneeded killing. She returns the Hollow Point to live with Janie, however much to her displeasure, Athena continues working as a mercenary for money. Not too long after her return, she accepts a contract from an old man named Felix, who hires her to protect his two daughters. Aurelia also leaves Jack and disappears into the universe to continue her hobby of traveling and hunting dangerous creatures, while Nisha, Wilhelm, and Timothy remain loyal to Jack. Jack and Nisha would also begin dating. He takes over the mining town of Lynchwood and gifts it to her for their anniversary, making her the sheriff. Jack then began focusing all of his efforts into obtaining the warrior and exacting revenge upon Pandora and the Vault Hunters. He uses his daughter Angel to gain surveillance over Pandora and control over the Echonet system. He opened mining operations to extract all of the iridium on the planet, where at some point he uncovered the Vault's location. These operations were also extremely profitable. With all of the money and failure of Atlas's adventure on Pandora, Jack purchases the rights to the company, claiming ownership over it as well, though not doing anything with it. Also purchased was a diamond pony named Butt Stallion. A byproduct of Iridium is created, known as Slag. It possesses many mutagenic properties which Hyperion would begin experimenting with. Many local species were tested on, and so were many humans. Okie dokie, Sammy, let's say we start that test. It's Dr. Samuels. The test subject is still conscious. You can't expect me to- Sorry, baby, I can't hear you over the sound of people not being injected with Iridium right now. See, this vault key didn't make Iridium come out of the ground for nothing, right? So, we've got it. We might as well do some good with it. You're not eager to be on the other side of that glass, are you, sweetheart? One such man would be a vault hunter by the name of Krieg. He develops disassociative identity disorder, adopting the personality of a psycho. Hey, remember back when we were sane? She can taste the bloody hatred! Guess not. However, maintaining an inner voice set on keeping him on the path of good. If you ever kill an innocent person, I will destroy us. Oh, shut up! No, that's the deal. You can kill as many of the deserving as you like, but the second your axe touches the flesh of an innocent, I'll end this. All of it. A razor to the veins, just like that fugitive we tried to grab on Hera, remember? Get out of my head! I'll take that as a yes. Other such test subjects were a mother, father, and their daughter Tina. Both parents would die, but thanks to a grenade Tina hid in her dress, she would manage to escape Hyperion. Commencing slag injection on subjects supplied by the Hyperion liaison known as... Ugh. Flesh stick. Don't worry, honey. Everything's gonna be okay. Baby, don't look. Sweetheart. Remember that heavy red rock I told you to hide in your dress? Pull the pin at the top, then throw it at the wall. Mommy? Just run. Tia! Run! At some point, she ran into Roland. The two would develop a close relationship with each other, saving one another's lives on many occasions. With more and more power flowing to his head, he ordered Hyperion to enact corporate and military control over Pandora. Crimson Raiders would be hunted down for opposing Hyperion, and an informant named Shep Sanders, who he ran into in the first game, sold out the location of New Haven, where many Crimson Raiders were located, prompting Wilhelm to destroy it and kill everyone. Roland, Lilith, Brick, and Mordecai attempted to protect the city and its residents. However, they inevitably failed, almost getting killed by Wilhelm before retreating. Wilhelm nearly killed us all in New Haven without taking a scratch. If things get bad, just run. Brick is captured and tortured by Nisha, who kills his second beloved puppy, Dusty. Let me tell you something about Brick. We snagged him during the fall of New Haven. He never sold out his friends, but his puppy, it was this little brown thing. Once I wrapped my hands around its neck, Brick lost it. You could barely hear the crack of the bone over his sobs. I mean, actual sobbing, like a baby. It was pretty embarrassing. Later, when Helena Pierce and a group of residents attempted to flee, Jack captured Pierce and personally executed her before ordering Wilhelm to kill everyone else. We've hijacked the train that runs through the dust. 
If all goes well, we should get to sanctuary in a day's time. Hyperion hasn't diverted any troops from New Haven to pursue us, and a sandstorm has devoured their nearest frontier town. We just need... Oh! Damn it! Everyone, get away from the windows! Hey, everybody! How are you? Jack here! Nobody knows! What is the meaning of this? Uh, I'm sorry, what was your name? Pierce. Well, Miss Pierce, and please don't tell me it's Mrs. Pierce and break my heart, this train doesn't belong to you, so why don't you turn around and face me, Pumpkin? This train was commandeered legally under the... Holy nutballs! <laughs> what happened to your freaking face? Okay, how about this? Lady, I don't even know what to call you. You tell me why you look like you headbutted a belt sander, and I'll let all of you go right now. My husband gave me a skag pearl ring. The pearl released hunger-inducing pheromones. Oh, you know what? I am so sorry. I, I just, forgive me. What, where's your husband now? He's dead. That is a heartbreaker. But you got something in common with him now, at least. Oh, holy crap. Did you see your head? It was like... <laughs> oh, my God. We'll help kill these savages. Understood. Brick eventually manages to escape the capture of Jack, finding Shep Sanders and killing him for his betrayal, which Roland didn't like. Brick always did have a flair for the dramatic. Made a real scene of it when he escaped my jail. Blew it sky high, swore revenge for what Jack and I did to him, said we turned him into a bandit the moment we killed his dog. I hear that after Brick escaped our custody, he tracked down the guy who betrayed New Haven to Hyperion. Somebody named Shep Sanders. Brick gouged his eyes out with his thumbs and cracked his skull open like an egg, all while poor Shep screamed for mercy. Her friend Roland kicked him out of sanctuary after that. You vault hunters think you're different from bandits. But you're not. With the loss of New Haven, as well as the death of his second dog, Brick calls it quits and decides to leave the group. Mordecai isolates himself, however still working with the Raiders. Roland would then break up with Lilith, so he could focus on Hyperion and the Crimson Raiders. Jack attempts to eradicate them, and they are all slowly pressed back to the City of Sanctuary. After their breakup, Lilith decided to draw bloodshot bandits away from Sanctuary under the alias Firehawk and thanks to all of the newfound Iridium, her siren powers are mysteriously increased. Jack also tracked down the vault key to its current holder, Patricia Tannis, who was tortured into giving up the object. Hey, you know how I got my hands on that vault key? See, a few years back, Wilhelm and I paid a visit to your little friend Tannis, and we beat her for hours. We ripped it out of her broken fingers. But we let her live, because that's what heroes do. They show mercy. Jack then begins using the Iridium from the planet to supercharge Angel, speeding up the Vault Key's process. He then begins sending out messages to lure in Vault Hunters to Pandora, where he systematically kills each and every one of them who arrive on the planet. Talk to me, Angel. I need a Vault Hunter and I need him yesterday. I found someone with great potential. His name is Zero, or at least he's called that. No one knows his real name and... No, 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 no. Next! I, I hate those mysterious warrior types. You know, nine times out of ten, there's nothing actually special about them. Who else you got? Playing zero surveillance footage. Slag, you freak! Leaves falling from trees. Snow drifting onto the ground. Life leaving your corpse. Did that guy just speak in haiku? So what's this Zero guy doing on Pandora in the first place? I don't know. Angel, you got a brain the size of a planet, so don't give me a oh, oh. From what footage we have of him, I can't even tell if Zero's human or not. Well, what, what do you mean, not human? Is it a robot, an alien, what? I don't know. Evidently, Zero has been on Pandora for a few weeks. I have satellite footage of him conversing with the locals. Roll it, Angel. <laughs> Look at this freak! Shut up, Zeke! What do you want? A ninja guy? I desire a challenge. <laughs> By the way your fruity ass talks, it sounds like you're plenty challenged! <laughs> Can it, Zeke? Sorry, I swear it's impossible to keep that boy's mouth shut. You would consider it a challenge, then? Uh, I guess. 
This is intriguing. The vault, my masterpiece. Challenge accepted. Holy! You cut off his head! Holy skunk suck! You decapitated Zeke! Why... Uh, why does your helmet say zero? He was no challenge. My skills have not been tested. I need something more. Uh, no, uh, there are some pretty dangerous bandit clans. No. The creatures around here are... No. Um, the... The vault? Go on. Uh, alien power, lots of danger. A real challenge. Huge challenge. This is intriguing. The vault, my masterpiece. Challenge accepted. Well, when you're right, you're right, Angel. I think this Zero guy will do nicely. The team you dispatched to the village of Ahas has returned, sir. No problems, I'm assuming. Not quite. They were unable to secure the village. Whoa, run that by me again. Only one member of the occupation force made it back alive. He has two broken legs, he lost an arm, and Sunstroke seems to have driven him completely insane. But he keeps saying one name over and over. Yeah? What name? Salvador. We've got some satellite footage from Ovejas taken shortly before our occupation force arrived. Play it. Kill him! I want to hear his neck snap! Salvador. For the murders of the men known as Blunt Crack, Craw, Friday, and Spitstain, you will now be hanged by the neck until dead. Have you last words in your defense? They were bandits! They tried to kill me, Abuela! Yes, yes, yes. You have attempted to convince your fellow villagers of this many times. Anything else to say regarding the murder of these men? Uh, it was fun? Come again. Killing those men was fun? Killing bad guys is always fun! What the hell? Who are those men? Attention, Attention bandits. bandits! Your, your town, town is, is now property of the Hyperion, Hyperion Corporation. Corporation. Vacate, Vacate the, the premises, premises or we will open, open fire! fire. Hyperion? Who's Hyperion? This must be some mistake. Uh, sirs? I think you've come to the wrong town. You want... Everybody, get down! Now! I've managed to recover the last echo recording from the Ovejas Occupation Force, Jack. Let's hear it. Ah, my arm, you maniac! Quit your whining! You still got the other one? Besides, you killed Judge Hector, shot up my town? What? What do you care? That guy was gonna hang you. Nobody's perfect. Now, why did you come here? Handsome Jack's orders. We're clearing out bandit villages and looking for vault hunters. What's a vault? What are you, stupid? Ah! I may be stupid, but at least I can walk, cabron. The vaults are alien treasure. Unimaginable danger. Oh, that sounds fun! All right, you're free to go. Crawl on back to your amigos. Crawl? It'll take me days to get back to my unit. You maniac! You bastard! Ah! Por favor, call me Salvador. Yeah, yeah, I like this guy. Put him on the list. Sir, I may have found another potential. He's a commando. Oh, yeah? Where is he now? He's been captured by bandits. They're, uh, torturing him. Wow, I'm already impressed. Just listen. <sighs> What's that ring you're carrying, pretty boy? Oh, you got a wife? A pretty wife? Ex-wife. You ain't her type. She prefers men who have more brain cells than teeth. <sighs> oh, tell me where she's at. I'm gonna pay her a visit. Doubtful. She's on Themis with the rest of the battalion. <laughs> you got a sweet piece of ass waiting for you back home. What the hell are you doing on Pandora, Blad? Getting to know the friendly locals. <sighs> you know what I think? I think Soldier Boy's here to collect a bounty on us. And I think he got paid in advance. Ain't that right? Damn, you got me. Where is it, you slag? Where's the money? <sighs> Come on, guys. <clears throat> Don't hold it against me. I just wanted to turn you idiots in and have the town you stole the money from chant to my name. Is that so much to ask for? Oh, okay. Evidently it is. Where's the play money? It's... It's in there. What? 
This little box thing? It's a storage deck unit. Just toss it on the ground and it'll... It'll open. Fine. <sighs> that was too easy. That ain't no storage deck! What the hell?! <laughs> Chew him up, turret! There you go, Sheriff. Those are the guys who robbed your bank last week. I accept cash. All right, here's your 10 thou. The warrant says 20,000? The warrant also specified alive. Fair enough. The hell are you looking so sad for? You're still making more money than anyone around here will see in six months. Ah, it's not the money. It was just easy, you know? Too easy. What's the matter? You didn't get enough glory in the military? Oh, there was plenty of glory. Just the kind that winds you up on this hellhole of a planet. Angel, are we hearing this live right now? Yes. Why? Get the Hyperion Truth Network on the line now. Nine thousand, ten thousand. There you go. Thanks. Got any other morons you need brought in? Yeah, we got the Stoke Brothers, uh, Grandma Lopez. Are you hungry for excitement? Fame! Eternal glory? Wait a minute. Turn that up. The Hyperion Corporation needs your help to search for the lost alien vaults of Pandora. See the world. Fight dangerous creatures. Get rich beyond your wildest dreams. Become a vault hunter today. Huh. You, uh, you still want to hear the rest of the bounties? Nope. Sorry, Sheriff. I think I just found a new job. <laughs> I'm brilliant! Am I, am I brilliant? I'm brilliant! The radio advertisement was a very nice touch, sir. Thank you, Angel. Now do me a favor and put this Axton guy on the list, will ya? A young high school student by the name of Gage had a science fair project gone wrong. She created what she refers to as Death Trap, who accidentally murdered her fellow classmate after being shoved by her. While facing expulsion, her and her father booked a train ticket and fled to Pandora. So, Marcy's project won first prize, and I earned third place. <laughs> third place. That is what we call politics, people. And it's really unfair because I... Okay, anyway, Marcy started gloating. She started pointing and laughing at me. And then she pushed me. It's... Okay, that's when things got messy. Death Trap recognized Marcy as a threat. So he gave her a quick slash with his Digistruct claws. No big deal. That's what it's supposed to do. And I must have miscalibrated them last night when I was adding the Discord circuits because the second his claws touched Marcy's skin, she kind of like, um, okay, she exploded. She like everywhere. It skin things, uh, eyeballs, I don't know. It was gross. Anyway, sorry. After they finished cleaning up Marcy, and the auditorium, I was escorted to the principal's office, which I've never been to before, and I found out that I wasn't getting expelled or arrested for what Death Trap did to Marcy. I'm getting expelled and arrested for what Death Trap did to Marcy, and Marcy is not getting any sort of recourse for what she did to me, which was a serious shove, and I'm traumatized because... Huh. Huh. I called my dad and got him to create a distraction. He's very brilliant with things like that, and I'm not gonna go into the details about it, but let's just say that it involves a golf cart and a lot of gasoline. Good job, dad, so that I can slip away. So anyway, long story short, I'm currently echo casting from the cozy confines of a transplanetary shuttle. Dad and I figured I should probably head somewhere where the cops and their hmm, crime buster bots couldn't find me. So, so after a teary farewell, I love you, Daddy. I grabbed a ticket to Pandora. Which, I i mean, I, I, I've always been kind of interested in vault hunting, but who knows? Maybe here my talents will actually be appreciated and I won't go to jail for being brilliant. Third place. I mean, seriously. <sighs> Bastards. A vault hunter team comprised of Axton, Maya, Salvador, Zero, Gage, and Krieg are lured to Pandora thanks to the efforts of Jack. Seeking excitement, fame, or simply a challenge, the new vault hunters all appear to be admirable foes. 
but one siren seeks answers. Maya, who spent her life raised by monks, ventures to the planet to learn more about the mysteries of her heritage and what she is. I found a potential vault hunter, sir. You'll definitely want to hear this. She's a siren. What? Unlike Lilith, she seems to have no connection to Iridium. But... Tell me everything. No. I have no information on her parents, but as a baby, she was left with the Order of the Impending Storm. The who? They're an order of monks who rule the planet of Athenus. The earliest surveillance footage I can find is from four years ago. Play it. People of Athenus, after years of training and preparation, the order of the impending storm is ready to reveal your savior. Speak, Maya. Speak to your subjects. Uh, hi. <clears throat> what she lacks in eloquence, she makes up for in power. Know this, Maya will protect this planet from all forms of evil. From... Sophus, could I have a word? Now's not really the time, child. For years, you said I'd be out there exploring, not smiling and giving speeches. Your place is not to question, child. Now, smile and wave. Keep calling me child and see what happens, jackass. Brother Sophus, I found something. Yes, what is it? Research notes from an archaeologist on Pandora. <laughs> Pandora? The planet of convicts and cannibals? Yeah, it sounds incredible. But this archaeologist says that sirens have some sort of connection to Iridium, and the vaults... Maya, that's enough. If I traveled to Pandora, I could learn even more about my siren lineage. That's enough! We have fed you, trained you, protected you. The people of Athenus look to the order of the impending storm for guidance and protection. If you were to leave... This planet would be defenseless. You keep saying I'm going to defend this planet. I've trained for years, but I've never actually fought any of this evil the Order's always on about. Your time will come. I promise. Besides, this planet has everything you could possibly want. Please, child, retire to your room. Don't call me child. <laughs> I apologize. Please retire to your room, Maya. No! Please, no! What's going on? What is this? Today is a great day, Maya. Today, your training is finally put to use. Who are these people? Terrorists, criminals, evil men. You will destroy them, as is your duty. This is what you have trained for. What? To execute unarmed men? Do not question me, child. These men are a danger. Brother Harker, bring the first sinner forward. Yes, Brother Sophus. On your knees, sinner. Oh, God! Not her! Not her! What is this man guilty of? Do not question. I promise! I'll pay! I'll get you your tithe! Just don't let her near me! What? Do not listen, child! Execute him! Ah, to hell with it. What are you doing, child? Put me down! Put me down, child, now! Twenty-seven years. For twenty-seven years, you've been using me to keep these people frightened, haven't you? You don't understand! Shut up! You didn't want me to protect this planet. You wanted me to keep it scared, keep me locked up so these people would do what you asked. Nobody's gonna disobey the order if they've gotta face the wrath of a siren, is that it? You know nothing! Child, you have so much left to learn! You don't... <laughs> Don't call me child. Everyone get out of here! You have nothing to fear from the Order anymore. I'm leaving. But where will you go, child? Uh, um, Maya? To Pandora. I'm gonna find some answers. Angel. Yes, Jack? Find her. With the new group of Vault Hunters gathered to a single location, Jack's plan of killing them all doesn't go as intended. They survive his attempt to kill them on their train, leading it to crash in the snowy tundra of Winchir Waste. They encounter Claptrap, who leads them to Sir Hammerlock, who resides in the small town of Lyersburg. All the while, Angel directs the Vault Hunters once again, swearing to help them defeat Jack and put a stop to everything. Hammerlock instructs the crew on how to get to Sanctuary so they can join the Crimson Raiders. Upon arrival, they are informed that Roland was captured by the bandit Firehawk, who, as we established, is actually Lilith. 
She tells them that he was grabbed by the bloodshot bandits, and he sends the Vault Hunters to rescue him. Thanks to the efforts of Scooter's sister, Ellie, our characters are capable of sneaking into the base to free Roland. Upon freeing him, the characters all learn of Jack's intentions and Roland's plan to take him down. They are sent to retake the Vault Key, which they believe is being transported on a Hyperion train, with the help of Tiny Tina, the now 13-year-old explosives expert, and a re-recruited Mordecai. They derail the train, causing it to crash. What they find, however, is not a Vault Key but instead Wilhelm, as the plan was anticipated all along. The Vault Hunters are capable of killing him and retrieving a power core that was in his possession. They bring that power core back to Sanctuary to be used as its new shield. However, after installing it, the core forces Sanctuary's shields to be dropped, allowing Helios to open fire. Wilhelm was an admirable foe, taking on the likes of the original Vault Hunters. However, Handsome Jack, much like he does, used Wilhelm. His plan was always to get that core into Sanctuary, and so he had poisoned Wilhelm prior to his encounter with the Vault Hunters, ensuring that he would lose the fight. So, Wilhelm nearly killed your Vault Hunter friends a couple of years ago, and you just blow him away like any other grunt? Yeah, that's because I poisoned him before you guys fought. Worth it, though, to make you think I didn't want you to have that power core. But, uh, psst. Spoilers. I did. With Helios' moonshots raining down and Sanctuary's defenses compromised, in a desperate attempt to escape, Scooter uses a mechanism he installed throughout the town to lift it into the sky. An iridium-charged Lilith uses her siren powers to teleport the whole of Sanctuary to another location, leaving it crippled. That's the best you got. A flying city? What could your jumps possibly have that makes you think you've got a chance against me? A siren. Sup. Angel assists the Vault Hunters back to Sanctuary, hoping she's on their side, while Roland and Lilith have some well-justified trust issues with her. It isn't until she reveals the Vault Key is with her, they choose to listen. However, to get to her, there are multiple obstacles that stand in our character's way. These include the likes of a death wall, a defense bunker, and a voice-activated passcode. Mordecai's bird Bloodwing is also captured by Jack, where slag experiments are performed on her until she is inevitably killed. While it is believed by many fans that Jack body double killed an opportunity was Timothy, his transformation at the end reveals it was simply some minor technology keeping him disguised. Whereas Timothy has undergone surgery to look and sound as much like Jack as possible. The fate of Timothy Lawrence is unknown. Along the way, Brick is once again recruited and agrees to help the Crimson Raiders take Jack down. With Brick now part of the main crew, he sends the Vault Hunters on some missions to the town of Lynchwood destroying property, killing people, but most importantly, raising hell for Nisha. She winds up challenging the Vault Hunters to a duel, stating either she will die or they will. Dealing with you, I think, is going to be much simpler for both of us. I die or you do, nice and clean. It is here where Nisha loses her life, and Brick gets some closure. With all the pieces in place, the Vault Hunters storm the Hyperion base and face the opposition of Bunker though it is incapable of stopping them. After finally coming face to face with Angel and learning of her true siren origin, she instructs the Vault Hunters to kill her, as it is the only way of preventing the key from being charged. And our characters comply. After the death of Angel, Jack teleports behind an unsuspecting Roland and fires a bullet through his chest, killing him, while managing to capture Lilith in the process so he can finish charging the key. She's dead. Jack just lost his only way to awaken the warrior. We got the Vault Key, but this isn't over yet. We gotta find Jack and take him out. Lilith, take the Vault Key to Tannis. I'm going after Jack. Roland! Son. You bastard! I'm gonna... Language? What's that saying? Don't pick a fight with a man with nothing left to lose. See, I'm gonna show you just how much you have to lose, and I got the most powerful siren on the planet to do it with. Lilith, kill the Vault Hunter. We've got a date to keep with the warrior. Do it, Lilith. No! With the vault already uncovered, he takes Lilith and brings her to its location, ordering as much iridium as possible to be transported to them. Roland's life affected many characters. Someone who it hit the hardest was Tina. 
who, in a removed voice line from the game, expresses her sadness upon hearing the news. Roland's dead? Thank you for... Thank you for telling me. Please go now. Without Roland or Lilith, it leaves Mordecai and Brick to lead an all-out assault through the Iridium Blight and to the Vault. The Vault Hunters arrive just as the key is charged, and Jack opens the gate, releasing the Warrior. With a Vault Monster out for blood, our characters use every skill and weapon in their arsenal to take down the Vault Monster, killing it. Lilith is freed from her confines, while Jack is killed. That was for Roland, asshole. Exhausted by all of the trouble vaults tend to bring, Lilith intends on destroying the key. Though just as she's about to do it, a map accidentally pops up, showing the locations of many more vaults spread across the universe. Wait a sec, let me. You don't want to touch this thing right now, trust me. Slow down, man. I nearly bought it back there. Hey, Lilith! Where the hell were you guys five minutes ago? If it weren't for the Vault Hunter, we'd all be dead. I think that's her way of saying we won. <sighs> yeah, I figured that. If I never see this key again, it'll be too soon. It's been fun, you alien piece of shit. Huh? What the? Are those vaults? <laughs> you know what that means. Yeah. <laughs> no rest for the wicked. With this newfound information, all of the vault hunters split up, traveling off of Pandora in search of new vaults, while others remain on the planet. While on an expedition with Sir Hammerlock, the vault hunters encounter Professor Nakayama, holed up in a crashed Hyperion ship, though he would meet his demise falling down a flight of stairs. His body is then recovered by a traveler and collector named Shade. With Jack dead, it leaves his job position open for the taking on Helios. A Hyperion executive named Saul Henderson takes control of the company. Mordecai would get a new bird Talon, and due to the trauma of Jack's death, Butt Stallion turned herself into an immobile statue, which was set on display in Jack's office on Helios. The events of Tales from the Borderlands remain a mystery. Its branching narrative provides for many outcomes, different character motivations, as well as whether or not certain individuals live or die. Borderlands 3 confirms its canon within the overall universe, but the definitive series of events are still unknown. I will try my best to give you the story of what happened, however certain aspects are subject to change. Back on the planet of Pandora, in the underground city of Hollow Point, three con artists, Felix and his two adopted daughters Fiona and Sasha, set up the con of a lifetime creating a fake vault key, which they intend to sell. Sasha's boyfriend, August, is tricked into believing it's real, and manages to pique the interest of Hyperion executive Hugo Vasquez into purchasing the item. At the same time while this is happening, a Hyperion middle manager named Reese is seeking a promotion from Henderson, only to be shocked after seeing him launched out of an airlock by Vasquez, who has now claimed control over Hyperion. Instead of a promotion, Vasquez demotes Reese to assistant vice janitor just after letting it slip that he had a deal to purchase the vault key. As a way to get back at Vasquez, Reese, with the help of his friends Vaughn and Yvette, plan to steal his deal from under him. With a briefcase filled with $10 million, Reese and Vaughn head down to the surface of Pandora, to the town of Prosperity Junction. After getting into a quarrel with some of the local bandits, Yvette sends down a loader bot to help them. While heavily damaged, the loader bot helps with most of the bandits before fleeing with its life. Reese and Vaughn, however, make it safely to the world of curiosities run by Shade, where bodies of Professor Nakayama, Boom, and Commandant Steel Trap are displayed. Reese recovers a data chip from Nakayama's body, and Shade introduces the two to August and Sasha, who possess the fake key. In the midst of a deal gone wrong, the key is broken, revealing it was a fake all along to Reese and Vaughn, as well as August, realizing he's been betrayed. To make a bad situation worse, the bandit leader Bossa Nova crashes into the middle of the deal, with Zero in hot pursuit. With all hell broken loose, Bossa Nova steals the money and flees. Amidst the rest of the confusion, Reese and Vaughn attempt to hijack Felix's caravan, only to be taken prisoner by the three. 
hoping to not be thrown out of the moving caravan. The two Hyperion employees reveal that they can track the money and reclaim it. So the two sides form a temporary alliance. Reese then plugs in Nakayama's data drive into his head, which shortly after, he collapses. While unconscious, Vaughn traces the money to an abandoned Atlas warehouse, where Bossa Nova has bandits and psychos compete in a death race, where the winner is gifted the briefcase. While infiltrating the base, the group separates into teams. Sasha and Reese get trapped in the facility and sneak their way to the arena, running into a familiar face, while Vaughn and Fiona become contestants themselves. Once our characters are gathered to the arena, the briefcase goes on quite the comical journey, bouncing from location to location, vehicle to vehicle, until it is inevitably in the hands of Felix. Bossa Nova is killed by Zero, and just when everything is seemingly fine, Felix chooses to betray Fiona and Sasha, taking the money for himself. Depending on the actions in-game, Felix can either escape with the money and return later, or be blown up by the bomb inside. Either way, this betrayal falls heavily on the two girls. With all the destruction in the arena, it left a lot of loot lying around, and so our group begins to salvage for anything that might be valuable. While searching, Reese instead falls into an Atlas cellar, containing the hidden Gordas project. Two mysterious pieces are recovered by Fiona and Reese, and when combined, lead to the location of a vault. A hologram then appears of Handsome Jack, which only Reese can see thanks to Professor Nakayama's work. The data drive that was obtained had a copy of Jack's consciousness, and when plugged in, allowed him to manifest himself through the eyes of Reese. The rest of the group, however, come across a bunch of old recordings talking about the Gordas Project. The first is from Athena, who at the time was on her rampage killing any and all Atlas personnel. Hello, Pollux. Too bad I missed you in Old Haven. As you've no doubt surmised, the Gordas Project has been terminated. And now that you have no soldiers under your command, I regret to inform you that you've been relieved of your duties. I'll come by soon to ease your transition into retirement. And the following two are from an Atlas general, stating how the Gordas Project is too dangerous for a woman like Athena to get her hands on. So, it was locked away. If you're watching this, then I'm already in suspended animation. You must understand, Athena was trying to kill me. And what I possess is far too powerful to end up in the arsenal of a ruthless mercenary. But Athena is no longer a threat. Please activate the revival protocol in my stasis dock. My life and quite possibly the fate of the universe is in your hands. Intrigued by everything, the group plans to go to Old Haven to uncover the mystery of the vault. Angry at his actions, Vasquez begins sending moonshots towards our character's location, but thanks to the efforts of Loderbot, he rescues them, and they attempt an escape in the caravan. A bad situation is made worse when a rack hive appears, splitting Loderbot from the rest of the team. The caravan is damaged, and thanks to Reese's Hyperion tech, he manages to use the moonshot to take out the rack hive. Unfortunately, Reese and Vaughn are thrown from the half-destroyed vehicle, leaving them stranded in the desert. After traveling across the land for a short while, they come face to face with Vasquez. Wallowing in his own victory for too long, however, gives Reese enough time to cause a distraction, leading Loderbot to rescue them, flying them all the way to Hollow Point to rendezvous with Fiona and Sasha. After Reese and Vaughn were flung from the caravan, the two women made their way to Hollow Point to seek help from the mechanic Scooter. His catch ride business has slowly been expanding on the world of Pandora. He develops a crush on Fiona and is more than willing to help. The two sisters then return to their home and begin rummaging through the old trinkets Felix left behind. Fiona finds a gun, while Sasha refuses to open hers. While here, they are attacked by two hitmen, Kroger and Finch, hired by August's mom, Valerie, a bandit boss, for the scam of the vault key. The two manage to escape and run through the streets of Hollow Point, narrowly escaping death. Athena also makes her appearance to fulfill her contract of protecting the sisters, though that would be unbeknownst to them. After safely making their way back to Scooter's garage and reuniting with Reese and Vaughn, they all leave for the abandoned town of Old Haven. After some minor exploring, they manage to discover the hidden Atlas facility underneath the town. This small victory is short-lived as they are all ambushed by Vasquez and August. They hold everyone at gunpoint and have Reese and Fiona use their artifacts to join them together within the machine to release Gordas, a metallic sphere. The facility's security systems turn online. Fiona very quickly creates a distraction, allowing her and Reese to sneak into a shaft headed deeper into the facility. Meanwhile, the others fend themselves off from the security drones, and Vaughn and Sasha reunite with the others. When the team make it out of the facility, they are faced with Valerie, the woman in charge of the original vault key deal. 
When August and Vasquez exit the facility themselves, Vasquez attempts to explain himself, but is shot and killed. Before Valerie can execute the rest of the group, Athena shows up, saving them and scaring off Valerie and her goons, revealing Felix's contract in the process. When Gordas is finally activated, it turns out to be a robot designed to locate the Fault of the Traveler. But before she can do that, there are a few necessary pieces required to do so. With Athena now part of the crew, the characters all make their way to an Atlas biodome, situated far out in the tundra where they meet an Atlas scientist named Cassius, who is saved from being murdered by Athena. He was sent to Pandora to study the ecosystem and the plant life on the world. He reveals the location of the upgrade, and so the characters all split up. Reese and Sasha head out to turn off the security systems, while Fiona and Athena retrieve the upgrade. Everyone else remains with Cassius. When the characters all reunite, all hell is broken loose. Valerie and her goons attempt to steal Gordas and her upgrade, while Athena is caught in the middle of a fight with Brick and Mordecai, whom Valerie has hired to remove her from the picture. Vaughn makes an admirable attempt to subdue Valerie, but ends up getting beaten up by the end of it. When things are all settled down, the characters all lose. Fiona is subdued, Athena is captured by the Vault Hunters, and the final Gordas piece is in Handsome Jack's old office on Helios. So Valerie tasks the team on what she believes is a certain suicide mission. Back in Sanctuary, Athena is tied up and held at gunpoint, forced to recall the events of her time working for Jack on Elpis. By the time the story is finished, Lilith determines she doesn't like what she hears and orders her soldiers to fire on Athena. However, the Watcher appears, telling Lilith that war is coming and they need all of the Vault Hunters they can get. That was when I left Handsome Jack's employ. You regret teaming up with Jack? Yes. Now do what you will. Kill her! What? No! If it weren't for people like her, our friends might still be alive. Ready? This ain't us, Lil! This ain't you! Fire! What the hell? Is not the time for bickering, Vault Hunters. War is coming, and you will need all the Vault Hunters you can get. Gage and Axton, however, while searching for new vaults, had come across Aurelia on the planet of Epta. Similar to Athena, she was to be executed for her assistance in the events of the pre sequel. However, thanks to the Watcher's message, she is taken captive and brought to Sanctuary. Hello, Sanctuary! Guess who's back from hunting vaults on other planets? Did you miss us? And I'm the nerd? I mean, what's the deal here, you guys? First, Lilith is like, hunt the vault on Epta. And then she's like, don't kill the other vault hunters, bring back the one chick you found! War is coming! Ooh, you brought back a new vault hunting buddy? I wanna meet her. No, you don't. Aurelia is the meanest. What's all this about Athena and some guardian and war? Um, I'm Athena. I was relating to present company the story of how Jack rose to power. Back to the events of Tales from the Borderlands. A plan is formulated on how to sneak through Helios. Reese will go disguised as Vasquez, while the others pose as employees. Meanwhile, all of the others return to Hollow Point to seek help from both Scooter and Janie in building a spaceship, which Scooter is more than happy to do. With a plan in full motion and a spaceship successfully launched into space, the plan hits a snag when the corpse of Henderson hits the rockets, damaging the ship. Both Scooter and Fiona head outside to detach the rockets, however Scooter's hand would get caught in one of the machines. He makes the noble sacrifice and launches off into space, allowing the others to carry on their mission. I'm not going. I gotta catch a ride.
His sister Ellie would then take control over Scooter's business. By the time the team makes it onto Helios, the plan very quickly goes south. Yvette had been secretly working with Vasquez this entire time, and depending on the player's actions, you can either forgive her and gain her trust once again, or get her killed at multiple occasions. Fiona and Gordis had taken up the roles of tour guides, however access to Jack's office is restricted. Hollowjack, who's been whispering into Reese's ear this entire time, informs him of a hidden trap door he has leading into his office, which forces Reese to climb up through it, gaining access to his office, where he retrieves the final upgrade from Jack's trophy cabinet of memorable things. Amongst them include a feather of Bloodwing, his ex-girlfriend Nisha's cowboy hat, and a deed of Atlas's ownership rights. Jack, doing what he does best, manipulates Reese by getting him to sit in his chair, so he can feel what it's like to have the job position he's always wanted. In reality, the purpose was so Jack could leave Reese's body and be uploaded into the Helios' computer system. He still wants a body to walk around, however, so he plans on using an exoskeleton he intends to implant into Reese. However, Reese would escape. To stop Jack, the only way that's possible is to destroy Helios' power core. Fiona, Sasha, August, and Gordis are all betrayed by Finch and Kroger, who kidnap Sasha, Gordis, and her upgrade. At the reactor core, Jack does everything he can to try and stop Reese to no avail. The power core is destroyed, and with no power core, Helios is forced to crash land onto Pandora's surface. As the Hyperion employees all begin evacuating the station, Loderbot sacrifices himself as the rest of the characters launch in escape pods, while Helios crashes onto Pandora. With the characters all split up, Reese awakens amidst the rubble. After making his way back to Jack's office, he comes to learn Jack is still alive. He once again manages to jump his way into Reese's body and attempts to kill him, though Reese would destroy any and all cybernetics, keeping Jack alive. This includes his mechanical arm, the cybernetics in his head, and ripping out his own eyeball, once and for all, killing Jack for good. He then retrieves Atlas's rights and claims ownership over the corporation, becoming its CEO. By the time Fiona wakes up from her pot, she searches for her sister, only to see the vault has been opened. She finds Valerie shooting at Gordis, now a gigantic robot, as she is the reason for the vault monster's release. If destroyed, the monster will disappear. Valerie is soon smashed by the Traveler, killing her. Gordis pleads with Fiona to destroy her, as she can't stop the Traveler, to which Fiona and Sasha fire a rocket at Gordis, destroying her and locking the vault monster away once more. The characters' lives then moved on. Sasha and Fiona returned to Hollow Point, where they patched up August, while Reese went back to Cassius' facility, where he got all new cybernetics and began running Atlas. As the months passed by, both Reese and Fiona received Echo Beacons, leading them back to where it all began, Prosperity Junction. It is here the mysterious stranger kidnaps the two, forcing them to recall the events of their journey. They venture across Pandora, coming across pieces from their story along the way. The whole ordeal leads them back to Helios' crash site, where Kroger appears with a captured bandit. In exchange for Reese and Fiona, the stranger accepts the deal, only to strangle Kroger moments later. The bandit is revealed to be Vaughn, who had survived thanks to the efforts of Cassius, and the two tracked down Valerie when the vault was opened. Vaughn searched for his friends, but wound up taking many of the Hyperion refugees, forming their own camp. Now reunited, they are all led back to his home at the Helios site, where they interrogate the stranger, who is revealed to be Loderbot. Loderbot? Hi. He had survived the crash of Helios, and witnessed his friends destroy Gordis, feeling betrayed. He went on to implant himself into the exoskeleton Jack intended for Reese, and went on to formulate a plan to restore Gordis and bring her back to life. He kidnapped Reese and Fiona under the guise of the stranger, in hopes to understand their side of the story, hoping their actions could be explained, which they were. He had scavenged the remaining Gordis parts that were scattered across Pandora. With the help of his friends, they all formulate a plan to keep Gordis alive by killing the Traveler. Due to its teleporting abilities, Vaughn creates a plan to detonate a bomb within the monster to cripple it. Without the ability to move, they would shoot the Helios Moonshot Cannon, killing it. Fiona and Sasha are tasked with the bomb. Various options are given to the player as the team you wish to assemble. When chosen, Gordis is restored to her former glory, and the Vault Monster is summoned. Gordis is hesitant about this rematch considering how the previous one was such a failure. However, Reese reassures her that it'll be different this time, 
Reese and the rest of the team enter Gordas, fighting the monster, while Fiona and Sasha manage to make it inside with the bomb. While protected by guardians, the bomb is capable of being planted. However, when they make their escape, the detonator is out of range. And so Sasha sacrifices herself to detonate the bomb. The bomb is detonated and the Traveler can no longer teleport. They manage to fire the moonshot hitting the Traveler where it is killed. The victory of capturing a vault is short-lived, as Sasha is still alive from the explosion. While on the verge of death, one of Felix's gadgets resuscitates her, bringing her back to full fighting glory. With the mission successful and the vault theirs, the team begin scavenging all the loot, but Reese and Fiona head towards the vault itself. Upon entering, they are met with ancient Iridian surroundings and a chest which lies atop a staircase. They both open it together and disappear as the vault takes them away. Would you like to do the honors? It's the last one. It's only right that we both open it. It's the best part. Kind of hoping you'd say that. After the events of all of the games, Gearbox surprised everyone with an unexpected DLC for Borderlands 2, titled Commander Lilith and the Fight for Sanctuary. With Jack and the Warrior defeated, the Crimson Raiders set their eyes to the stars. They must decipher the map and prevent the vaults from falling into the hands of those who would wish to do harm. Lilith refuses to take leadership of the Raiders. However, before they can proceed, Sanctuary is attacked by Colonel Hector, an ex-Doll soldier. The city is flooded with a mutagenic gas, causing the Vault Hunters to flee Sanctuary, leaving the Vault Key with him. I do not understand why we haven't left Pandora yet. We are nowhere closer to finding the vaults. This map is the most important scientific discovery in all of human history, and Mordecai is using it as a coaster. Does that matter? We don't even know which planets these are yet. I don't like flying blind. Sanctuary's holding together using spit and wishful thinking. She's barely staying in the air, let alone leaving the planet. Well, we gotta do something. People are talking about disbanding the Raiders, saying Pandora don't need us now that Jack's gone. We need a leader. She don't want the job, man. And can you blame her? Sometimes when you're the one calling the shots, people get hurt. Not making a choice is still a choice. So then, we have no plan, no working ship, no leader, and a soda can on the vault key! Lil, we need to make a call. What do you think? <sighs> Ellie? That ain't the engines, Lil. This is Lilith. Sanctuary is under attack. All civilians evacuate the city immediately. Crimson Raiders, to me! Show them what we're made of! Vault key. Uh, Lilith! There's too many of these pendejos! This is Lilith! All Crimson Raiders fall back to HQ! Just tell me where to point this, son bitch! 
Come on! Time to change the world. Whose soul is this? Hector was once the leader of a large unit of doll soldiers. Doll promised them all they would receive a planet all to themselves thanks to their efforts on the battlefield. Something that was described as a personal paradise. What happened, however, was they were sent to Pandora to be used as a mining force. His men wanted to revolt against Dahl for lying to them, but Hector calmed everyone down, and they proceeded to do what was ordered. In their mining efforts, he and his squad would find an Iridian artifact and present it to their superiors. What seemed like a victory would only once again follow with betrayal. Dahl collapsed the entrance to the mine, locking them all inside to die. He and his men would begin to develop an unknown disease when Cassius Laclamane would stumble across them and begin performing experiments. Hector would trick Cassius into creating a gas that would change Pandora forever. Marvelous news! While foraging in an abandoned facility, I came across some old doll miners dying of a strange illness. When I explained I was a scientist, their leader welcomed me with open arms. He was most curious about my research into biodomes. Before I left, he asked that I inspect the health of his men and ease what suffering I could. Apparently, they survived a mining accident of some kind. Before meeting the Scarab 191 crew, I feared my life's work died the day Atlas abandoned me. But the spores I've discovered in these miners' lungs fill me with incalculable joy. Hector has promised he will retrofit this doll facility with state-of-the-art equipment if I use my research to make Pandora more inhabitable. We have titled our new endeavor Project Paradise. I've always found it odd that this planet's soil lacks the essential building blocks for mature flora. Yet, while the land itself resists growth from desert to tundra, I've discovered a way forward. Upon careful observation, the same spores that fill these men's lungs can be found in the greater Pandoran atmosphere. Take a deep breath, Cassius. Measure twice. Change the world once. A breakthrough of a most gaseous variety! <laughs> While observing the miners, one expelled an indomitable vapor. Ooh, how it reeked! But as I gagged and gasped, I realized that this unsolicited fart is my path forward. I will develop a gas to spur Pandora's indigenous spores into a period of accelerated growth. Now, the question becomes how to ensure this gas cannot affect humans. Despite my inability to create a gas safe for humans, I'm certain another breakthrough is around the corner. I will make Pandora a paradise. And afterwards, other people will say, Cassius, why he did it? What a man! He made Pandora a paradise! Is that dashing, bespectacled scientist single? <laughs> Perhaps then there will not only be spores in the air, but love. After the Vault Hunters teleport away from Sanctuary, they run into Vaughn. The Helios base was overrun by Hector, and all of the Hyperion employees were killed by the gas. After that, Vaughn somehow worked his way up as a bandit war chief. The Vault Hunters use his base as their own temporarily. Mordecai would become infected by the gas, leading to our characters to search for a cure. Tannis uncovers its creation was by Cassius, and with the help of Vaughn, we manage to track him down. Unfortunately, when we find him, he is already infected, and as a final request, he asks that we kill him. The Vault Hunters comply, getting a sample of his blood, which they use to create an antidote. Vaughn also sends our characters to retrieve Butt Stallion. With the help of Tiny Tina and Brick, she is retrieved and returned to safety. Due to her loving and caring nature, Vaughn decides Tina should take care of her. Anyway, thanks for saving Butt Stallion. I got a real soft spot for the old girl, you know? But 
I'm real busy with bandit stuff and, you know, saving the world. So, Tina, could you take care of her for me? Yes, 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 thank you. Now immune to the gas, our vault hunters re-enter Sanctuary to take it back. Hector inhales the gas, mutating him even further, and forces the vault key in his body as a countermeasure. If he dies, the key is lost forever. After his defeat, Lilith makes the drastic decision to use her siren powers to destroy Hector, the key, as well as Sanctuary. With so much lost, Lilith officially takes control over the Crimson Raiders and sets their goals to the stars. However, not before saying that she needs to find the key, as she knows it's still out there. You finally stood your ground, Firehawk, but it's too late. I'm not leaving here without that map! You vault hunters are so blind. I have seen the true purpose of the map. It leads to power you can't possibly imagine. What the hell? Sanctuary is part of me now. The vault map is part of me. You can't destroy me without losing them both. Your dream dies with me. What? What do you think you're doing? Making the call. No! Lilith! She's alive! Lilith, are you okay? Yeah. It's gone. Lilith! That was awesome! Yeah! Sanctuary. <laughs> Is the freaky tree man dead? Hey, Roland would have done the same thing. Worth it! Holy crap, I'm so jealous, I wanted to blow up that shit forever! I'm cool, I'm cool. I calculated that there was an 86.4% chance that Sanctuary would have exploded as soon as it reached escape velocity. Perhaps I should have shared that with you sooner? Sanctuary, the map, everything's gone. Hey, you made the call. We're all still here, nothing else matters. Yeah, I guess you're right. So, uh... What now? Up there, Hector showed me the map. I saw the vaults. Connected somehow, part of something bigger. I don't know what it means. Look, we may have lost the map, but we never needed it before. We have to find the vaults before they fall into the wrong hands. We have got to keep searching. And that means leaving Pandora. But I can't go with you. Not yet. Someone has to rebuild the raiders. We need new blood. New badasses if we're gonna be ready for the next fight. Find the vaults. No matter how far it takes you, no matter what happens, you will always be Crimson Raiders! Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> well, old Sanctuary went out in a way that would have made Scooter happy. Killing a big ass tree. That was a nice speech back there, Lil. Really tugged at the old heartstrings. But why is it that you're really staying here? That vault map's still out there, Ellie. And when I find it, then I can leave Pandora. I'ma hold it to that, string bang. And all of that leads to the events of Borderlands 3, when we meet our new set of Vault Hunters five years later. 
So for now, that was the timeline of Borderlands. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, as more videos about the game are soon to come out. Thank you for watching.